What's up guys and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another crazy day here in the world of crypto. So we have a lot to get through in today's video so you're not going to want to miss any of it. We're going to break down the Solana attack that happened yesterday. We're going to go through key dates that you need to watch. We're also going to go over the whole market and all of the news that you need to know to be fully up to date. So if you've got about eight minutes, watch the whole video. With that said, if you don't know me already, my name's Connor and I am not a financial advisor. I'm just a guy sitting in this room so never make any financial decisions based on my videos. And look at that, we got another green day ahead of us which is lovely to see green across the board essentially heading over to coin market cap we can see we are up 1.7 percent in the global market global crypto market cap 1.08 trillion lovely to see solana is the number one trending they did have their hack yesterday and it's great to see cdfi dot fund up 20 percent today and number two in trending cdfi is one of the launch pads that i've been talking about on the channel for probably a year now lots of awesome opportunities and all of these launch pads are down significantly right now so paying attention to them in this bear market go look at cdfi look at the other launch pads that are out there see if they launched projects in the bull market or before the bull market that did very well and decide from there whether or not you want to get involved but very nice to see that happening here so first of all let's go over what happened with solana almost 8,000 solana wallets drained in suspected supply chain exploit what exactly is a supply chain exploit this is a major issue for all developers not just solana web 2 has had massive security breaches and exploits due to supply chain attacks but what is it in short and i highly suggest that you read this entire thread here by sms joe mccann I'll link to it down there in the description. But attackers hunt for unsecure network protocols, unprotected server infrastructures, and unsafe coding practices. They break in, they change the source code, and they hide malware in the software build and update the processes. Because the software is built and released by trusted vendors, these apps and updates are signed and certified. In the software supply chain attacks, vendors are likely unaware that their apps or, or updates are infected with malicious code when they are released to the public. So new updates come out, the public download them, them, and then they unwillingly open themselves up for attack and this happens completely unknown to the developers so definitely read the thread if you want to learn more but definitely not a Solana specific attack so in my opinion this isn't worrying for me and the Solana chain I still hold my Solana coins of course you guys can do whatever you want to do but Solana team also traces the exploit back to the slope mobile wallets so if you have your Solana still on slope or anything like that what I would suggest is moving it over to either an exchange like Binance or your cold storage. We also have Solana saying there is no evidence that the Solana protocol or cryptography was compromised. Like I just said, this is something different that a lot of chains and a lot of Web2 products will suffer from. And moving on from that, we have VeChain reclaims a $2.2 billion market cap and is now the 34th largest cryptocurrency in the world by market value. Again, VeChain, one of my longest holds here. I've been holding this since 2017. I see a great future for VeChain still one of my biggest positions because I do believe in it myself. Highly suggest going out and researching this project. Now moving on to the dates, just to remind you we have August 10th where we're going to find out again about the good old CPI, Consumer Price Index. Have we peaked inflation? We want to hear that we've peaked inflation. This could be good and it does look like the market is currently pricing in this peak of inflation. We also have the $3 billion of Bitcoin being released from Mt. Gox at the end of August. Remember that, remember that closely. Even if we get a pump now, that could result in another dump, capitulation event, anything like that. But what I'm seeing from the chart and taking a look at the psychology of a market cycle, we may have already seen the bottom or near to the bottom in one of these three dips here. This may be the $17,000 range. This may be the $17,000 range, or this may be the $17,000 range. We're not sure exactly where we are right now, but it's very common for us to retest those lows. Maybe head a little bit lower than them, but it could mean that the bottom is currently in. We saw this in 2018 when we came down. We then had a huge rally of hundreds of percent, and then we came down to those lows again before heading off. To keep that in mind, we also have this shorter term trend here happening. As you know, I added to my short position up here at around 24,000, and right now we are sitting at around a 5% gain. If that was a 10 X leverage trade, that would be a 50% gain. If it was a 100x leverage trade, it would be a 500% gain. Remember, you need to know what you're doing before you get involved in any form of trading. Please, it's only for experienced traders. But if you do want to sign up to one of these exchanges in my description below, I have $10,000 worth of free bonuses right now. One of the best ones being BitGet, because if you sign up to BitGet, you can actually use their demo account and you can practice directly there on the exchange, learning everything there without real money. And 
while you're doing that, you can make the best of these free bonuses. So I would highly suggest getting that done while those bonuses are still available. Talking about this chart just quickly, remember again that this is a bearish continuation pattern that's happening right now. Until we do break above this cleanly, this is still considered a bearish continuation pattern. Again, maybe potentially heading us down to 17 or even lower. I do like to stress the point that nobody knows exactly where the bottom is. So please, when you're listening to anyone, whether it's me or someone else out there on the internet or someone in the coffee shop or at the pub, whatever it is, nobody actually knows. No matter how convincing they sound, nobody knows. It's it's the same with people saying that this time is different, that Bitcoin's going to zero, all of that sort of stuff. Nobody actually knows the answer. Anyway, moving on, we do have the DXY here showing some signs of resistance here, which may be now continuing this down downtrend, making lower lows and lower highs, which would be great. This does normally signify a nicer a nicer place for the markets to be more bullish. With that said, let's talk about a bit of news today. We have Michael Saylor stepping down as the MicroStrategy CEO. So he stepped down from MicroStrategy. MicroStrategy actually hits a three month high after the CEO's exit, but he is leaving to focus on Bitcoin. And we see a lot of CEOs doing this, like Jack Dorsey from Twitter doing exactly the same thing a few months ago. I also want to remind you about minor capitulation. This could be the last event that we see Bitcoin get pushed down. If Bitcoin does get back below 20,000, some of these miners will again be unprofitable, which may push them to sell, which pushes the price down, which pushes other miners to sell. And this is a cascading effect to pay attention to. And then remember, this could be set off by the catalyst of the Mt. Gox 3 billion Bitcoin at the end of the month. I remember that as an important thing coming up. And lastly, we also have MasterCard CFO saying crypto is is an asset class, not a payment instrument. Now, this is interesting. I do feel like Bitcoin is a store of value, whereas I do find that some cryptos can be a payment instrument. For sure, a stable coin that is backed one to one by a certain currency could be used as a payment instrument because it's great to use. It's so easy. I always try and pay my friends or pay anyone back in crypto because I can just do it so quickly. And I think it's a great payment instrument, but I am interested to hear what you guys have to say down there in the description. Remember, there is $10,000 worth of bonuses for you guys to collect right now. Practice your trading over on BitGet on the demo accounts, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.